Welcome to Invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. It's the current time of 1:10 p.m. on the Eastern Time on December 9th on Friday. Hope you guys have a good Friday and also a good week so far. Ethereum crashed at thousand two hundred sixty-eight dollars. That's about one percent so far. On the over crypto market, you can see that clear on the left side, both coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum, are down about zero point five percent respectively. And on the altcoin side of the house, I will say it's a kind of mixed bag, uh, but collectively, it's mostly down at the moment. And on the index front, it's also down, being、uh, just slightly mitigated,、um, mainly driven by. The main events today is not a seismic one, but is one of the equation、um, piece of the equation that we need to solve is the PPI report that came out today. So, with respect to the high level synopsis that CNBC has laid out to us,、uh, very you know、um, simplistically, it seems that the wholesale number,、uh, the wholesale price number, has risen by zero point three percent in November, which is more than expected, despite the hope that inflation. Is cooling down. It's not a significant amount of、um, you know appreciation, zero point three percent. But obviously, the key number we need to really look out for is the CPI report number that's coming out on Tuesday, right? But PPI report and the CPI report will have some correlations because you know obviously PPI report is talking about. You know what the、um, you know supplier of our consumer behavior, which are aka the retailers, you know which most of the time buy stuff in the wholesale perspective. But you know with the higher wholesale price, we'll triangulate into a higher purchasing cost for consumers, which will translate into a higher percentage of CPI report. So some of the key points here, right? The producer、uh, price index,、um, which is a measure of the companies get for their products. Again, right? What the、uh, suppliers of our economy gets as a wholesale price has increased by zero point three percent for the month and seven point four percent from a year ago. So relatively, as a thirty eight percent surge in the wholesale vegetable price helped push the food index up by three point three percent. Offsetting by an identical number in decline in energy costs, and this has to do with obviously with the Ukraine-Russian war,、uh, cultivated around the gas、uh, petroleum product price. And now the market, obviously, as CNBC has laid out here, as I already talked about, that next Tuesday,、uh, and the timing specifically is at 8:30 a.m. on the Eastern Time on the 13th, right? Which we'll hear from. You know the feds and obviously from the government on how is the CPI report looking like. I would call this a report card for the year end,、uh, and this will be a momentum driver、uh, on to seeing how we're gonna be shifting、uh, up or down、uh, till the year end.、Uh, And I think I, I foresee some sort of a relief rally、uh, subsequent to the CPI report, depending on how or、um, you know. Misaligned or aligned with expectations, if we miss the mark significantly, it will definitely have a macro effect.、Um, especially fund managers are a little bit more sensitive to want to propel their portfolio upward by year end.、Um, but if it's on the opposite side of the spectrum,、uh, we might see some collective sell-off before year end, just to kind of write it off、um, for tax purposes for year end.、Uh, so, so something we have to think about. And、uh, obviously the FOMC meeting,、uh, which will give us the outlook on. Okay, so now we know the PPI report. CPI report is coming out on Tuesday. What is the tactical next step with respect to the rate hike? Seems like the inflationary pressure seemingly cooling down. So does that mean that we will triangulate that into a fifty basis point rate hike this time? We'll see. Okay, and、uh, look at the other news. Just like take a look at on a trivial perspective.、Um, Seems like nothing really、um, is really worth mentioning. It seems I、like、just saw some stock movements here and there,、uh, some、uh, other news around the FTX、uh, incident with SBF. But、uh, beside that, the main catalyst we need to really look out for again CPI report next Tuesday. And、uh, with respect to before I shift on to the、uh, technical analysis, let's take a look at the the whales. Uh, Ark Invest and BlackRock, how they're doing? So it seems like Ark Invest is more of a 
mixed day, nothing really driving anything. It's kind of a normalization consolidating day, as we have saw, saw already. Um, but with respect to BlackRock, it seems like it's more of a sell day yesterday in comparison to a buy day. Again, BlackRock and ARK Invest have a different flavor of trading. So it seems like BlackRock is uh, definitely, you know, they also are more of a market driver as well. So driving some uh, volatility from BlackRock is definitely a little bit more severe in comparison to ARK Invest for obvious reasons. So let's take a look at the technical now with respect to a current time of t uh, 116. Uh, we are basically at the same level that we have been for the last uh, weeks now. We're still consolidating. Uh, daily is uh, looking quite extended. Um, we are still at the optimal level of 50 out of 70. On a weekly, it is uh, kind of gliding uh, just uh, with some level of uh, leveling off with uh, some level of separation, but uh, not a significant amount. So seeing some short-term normalization downward is not gonna be a surprise for us. So as we get the CPI report, I wouldn't be surprised before or after the, the report come out and the FOMC meeting as well, right? Don't forget that. We might see uh, some short-term dump and then short-term pump uh, until the market normalize uh, and kind of trade on a sideways fashion, like just treasuring water until the area. <clears throat> the year end, right? And then uh, looking at the Bitcoin side of the equation, uh, just take a look at this real quick. Down 0.51%, $17,000. Um, with respect to the daily, it looks pretty much the same with one, two, three, four, five rejections now. So staying around the $17,000 level is definitely unlikely. I think seeing lower level like 15,500 15, is going to be very logical. On a weekly front, we are looking to kind of glide, um, eventually going to come back down. Uh, so it seems like some normalization as we get closer and closer to the main events next week is going to be very likely. Uh, but as we get over the hump, I do foresee some uh, rebound, knowing the fact that we've been quite oversold and very consolidated already on a technical front. So that looks quite promising. Uh, I am optimistic on the technical front, which never really lies to us. And then just uh, quickly, glean, like just take a look at the uh, index front. Again, SPY needs to reach down to a lower level. And the lower level is going to be somewhere around, uh, again, daily will give us a better picture, to uh, 385, right, again. So it seems like we will be getting there shortly, especially on a daily. It is looking like we're going to get there momentarily. Until we get over the hump, which I deal again next week, we will see some rebound uh, and, you know, some actual uh, shift of uh, the momentum, which will drive. You can see that, right? The uh, oscillation upward had that peak and now we are almost forming that uh, valley. And as we form that valley, we have a V-shape and slowly it's going to recuperate from here. So I think the market is definitely looking like it's about to rebound. So that's not terrible. Okay, so appreciate you. Uh, I am uh, pretty exhausted actually from uh, just days of just going out really late. Um, and uh, I know it's going to take some time to get used to my naked face without my glasses on. Uh, but um, anyways, that's uh, not the topic of discussions anymore. But I appreciate you for joining me again. Uh, have a good rest of the Friday and I'll check you on the next one. Take care. Bye.